So what we're going to do is we're going to compare the radio frequency output power of this drone and the Avata 2 versus the Avata 1. Hey, look, it's literally at the same power level. But remember, this drone's not even armed yet. Right, seeing as it's not flying weather today, look, there is actually sleet on the floor. This is ridiculous. It went from sunshine to blooming, oh, I don't know. Hopefully it will clear up later and we can go for a little fly. But meanwhile, what I want to do, I want to try and get to the bottom of something because I thought my Ivata 2 was actually in FCC mode because when I first did the, um, the ham config um, support mod that you do with the goggles 2, it actually showed some extra channels. Now, since updates have happened with the drone, I've done one update, I think, after um, I originally done the hack. It's, it seems to have gone, and I can't access the um, I can't access manual channel mode. So, yeah, I, I mean, this is really crazy because the range of the drone is still really, really good. Like I've never seen the range of a drone so good without any kind of FCC mod. But I'm out the other side of the woods now, and we're still full signal. That is insane. So let's do some tests. So what I've got here, guys, is my Avata Two with my new goggles that came with the Avata. I've got my um, FPV controller three and the motion, motion controller here as well. Um, I'll come back to that in a minute. And on the other side, I've got the original Avata one with some funky props on and some upgraded motors. And I've got the old um, version two remote FPV controller two, and I've got the goggles two here as well. So yeah, loads of kit. <laughs> Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to compare the radio frequency output power of this drone and the Avata 2 versus the Avata 1. Now the Avata 1 has got the FCC hack done and I know it works because you know without it it's blooming terrible so it's absolutely installed on this one and I know it works. So with this tiny SA spectrum analyzer what we can see is we can actually see the transmissions from um, the aircraft and obviously you know the goggles will do a bit of communication between um, you know the aircraft as well but the main power output comes from the from the actual drone itself so we can see here on this screen so it's not that clear um, there's basically no output from anything that we've just got a completely flat line so let's start by turning some stuff on so we'll turn the Avata 2 on here get that fired up we'll turn the controller on as well all right, and we will turn the goggles three on as well. I've just messed my lens thing up here. Um, all right, let's turn that on. So with everything turned on, you can start to see some activity here. Um, very, very weak signals here, but everything's beeping as it's, as it's sort of connected. Um, but yeah, you can see this area here that wasn't there before. Um, with some sort of like you know emissions from the drone also what you notice is it's kind of like hopping about as well so that you're getting some over here as well so you can see this is kind of moved over this side now the drones they normally have the antennas kind of around here I think in the previous one don't I mean I'm not 100% sure um, but basically if you move this around you can sort of you know get an idea of where the strongest signal comes from this is not super scientific but it gives you an idea so you can see here some of these signals so this green line at the top is actually our peak hold so the way these drones generally work is when you just first turn them on and you're not armed it's running at a very low power mode so that it doesn't overheat the transmitter and obviously doesn't cause interference the things that it doesn't it shouldn't do um and it's also a good way of not you know obviously waste not wasting loads of energy whilst it's sitting there so this is in manual mode this drone um i can put this in make sure it's actually in manual mode and then we can actually start move that out of the way we can actually start the motors so as soon as the motors fire up you can see here we've got quite a lot of RF power coming out of the drone itself. Well, it's an increase anyway. Um, what, how much that actually is, you're not really going to know because you really need to be able to connect directly to the antenna in there to figure this out properly. But it gives you an idea. And you can see there's, there's actually a carrier coming from the drone. Um, and yeah, all is, looking, all is looking pretty good. So that's what you'd expect. Um, bandwidth, you can work that out. We, we're sort of at 5.7 gig here to going to 5.8 have I got that set to 5.9 so you can see it's using a good chunk of spectrum don't know exactly what the width of that is we'd have to work it out but the point is you can see it now the height of this reading here um, going vertically is actually the signal strength 
So if we turn the actual drone off, what you can see now is it hangs for a little while and then it drops back down to pretty much nothing. But we've got a hold level here. So you can see how high that is on that line there. Right, so now if we go over to the Avata 1 with the FCC mod, let's turn the drone on, get that started. And we'll turn the controller on. And also I need to plug the battery in for the uh, goggles. So the goggles are on. Already we're seeing what looks like slightly different data. Um, you've got a different kind of a lot narrower um, bandwidth signal. There's also something down there. I don't know what that is. So what I've got here is I've actually frozen this top green line. So that's the Avata 2. And this purple trace here, that is actually the one for this drone as well. So you can see, look, it's literally at the same power level. But remember, this drone's not even armed yet. So let's try that. Right, okay. So, right, okay. Put it in manual and we'll arm it. Turn the motors on. So, yeah, it's definitely higher. It's definitely higher. And you can see here, look, look at this. Look at this sort of spread out kind of area here where it's basically kind of creating noise because the signal strength is, is so much stronger. Whereas on this one, you didn't see that. You didn't see that kind of edge area there. And yeah, it's significantly stronger there. Doesn't look like a lot, but in RF terms, that's going to be, that's going to mean quite a lot. Let's move it round and just see, see if we'll get it to go any higher. I don't think we will, to be honest, but it looks to me, because as I've moved it round, it looks to me like that that is where the antenna is, because it's it's kind of spilling out over the edges there. Let's see that bit there where it went a bit quieter. Um, that's obviously the other side of the drone. So yeah, very interesting. Let's just turn that off so we can get a clearer picture of what's actually going on um, once that settles down. I think what I'll do is I'll actually just turn the whole turn this drone off completely right everything's off now so it's gone very very quiet um so first thing you notice here is the avata 2 has a lot of wider it has a wider carrier it's almost half as much again as the um avata 1 which would kind of go hand in hand with the whole um you know it's running higher megabits per second the point is if this drone is actually running 25 milliwatts in ce mode um which I think it probably is, the the range is insane. For 25 milliwatts, that's almost breaking boundaries um, because nothing I've ever seen, you know, running on that little power. You're talking about kids' toy Wi-Fi drone power level, um, which we all know doesn't work. But yeah, that's that's pretty astounding stuff. If that's what you know, if that if it is running twenty five milliwatts, the trouble is I haven't really got any way of testing. Um, you know, if this is twenty five milliwatts, I mean, going by the regulations, it should be twenty five milliwatts. But because if we had something that was definitely kicking out twenty five milliwatts, then we could you know put that on here and you'd see where it is in relation to these two. So you, you kind of need a known source without actually kind of connecting up. Um, you know the power of this power meter directly to this drone inside by taking it all apart and you know uh, physically connecting a, make a connection between here and here so there's no loss but if you look at the actual kind of difference here you've got a difference between minus 30 and minus 20 db which is 10 a factor of 10 so just by holding this around the sort of outside of the antenna here um, and comparing the two drones does give you a fairly good idea that obviously one is putting out a hell of a lot more power than the other one. Um, but that's about it, really. That's all it's really telling you. Um, but obviously you can see, you know, the width for the band width there is is higher. But the fact of the matter is flying this out in the field in a real live environment, this has insane range compared to anything that I've flown that's 25 milliwatts before. I've just had some more thoughts about this. I can't let it go. Um, the Avata 2 is actually dual band. So I'm wondering, does it flick from 5 gigahertz down to 2 gigahertz um, when it gets, you know, as the as it kind of goes out of range? Because um, obviously the penetration of 5 gig is a lot less than 2.4. 
2.4 is a lower frequency, so you know it's less prone to sort of obstacles, um, you know, sh shielding the signal basically. But it's it's still a microwave frequency, so it's still pretty bad. Like it's um, it's not as good as like say 800 megahertz or 400 megahertz, like control links and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I wonder if it's doing that, if it's actually going, um, you know, moving frequencies, and that's giving us the effect that it's it's got a better range than it probably has it's using you know rf principles so the other thing is as well on 2.4 gigahertz the regulations are laid to run 100 milliwatts um, a lot of the wi-fi access points and stuff like that are running 100 milliwatts so you know you are allowed to run that in those bands so i'm wondering that's another thing because 100 milliwatts at 2.4 versus fcc you know somewhere around one watt or two watts on five gigahertz there's not going to be as much of a gap between those two. Um, so let's find out, shall we? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to set the drone up here. I'm going to record the spectrum analyzer on five gigahertz, um, monitoring between five and six. I'm going to go out and walk up the road with the goggles and my uh, controller, leave the drone here armed and running. Yeah, that's a bit risky, but <laughs> I'm going to do that. Walk down the road and then record, record the five gigahertz spectrum and then i'm going to do the same test again and record the 2.4 and from there it'll be definitive we really will be able to see if it's actually hopping from 5 gig to 2 gig let's do it i've got my setup so i'm going to walk down the road and i'm going to use these as well so i'm going to talk so i can record on camera where i actually am um, and you'll see obviously a screenshot of this and also hear me talking on there this is going to be fun guys one two three four Okay, so drone's armed and I'm just going to head out. We'll see, look, it's, it's already um, flicked channels, it's changed over channels. So I've got the goggles on my head and I'm just going to just going to walk down the road. And I'll obviously radio back to um, let you know what's actually going on. Right, so I'm just outside the front door. We've got full signal, full signal, so I'm going to carry on walking. Well, it went down briefly to 48 megabits. Now it's back up to 60. I'm just at the end of uh, just at the end of the path. I don't know, probably 20, 30 meters away. Megabits, 
drop in there, back up to 10. The image quality is still good, but we're like two, two megabits now. Two megabits, two megabits, one megabit. Right, we're at about one megabit a second now, so. Pretty bad. Okay, right, I think I'm gonna come back. So, absolutely fascinating stuff. We could see that little signal on 2.4 come into play just as I kind of went out of range. I mean, it falls off pretty dramatically. So the five gig um, frequency, I mean, I got to literally the end of my pathway, which is like, you know, 15 meters away. But we are indoors, the drone's on the floor, you know, we've got house, wall, brick walls to go through, all of that stuff. Um, so, you know, it, it went down pretty rapidly. And then obviously, switched to 2.4 and then once it's on 2.4 i say 2.4 but it looks like 2.1 it's around that kind of region so yeah i'd have to have a check to see what um you know what the what the you know regulations are on that right okay so one final little test because i want to make sure that it is definitely um this drone that i'm seeing um, on 2.4 it, it definitely is look look at the signal strength here but what's interesting so the controller and the goggles are now in my car um, about 10-15 meters away from here and look so we've got lots of different things happening here in the car I was reading about 30 megabits so I, I would say that you know that is because I don't know it's weird isn't it but we can probably turn if we turn this drone off and we just see if it all just stops and I think you'll find that it does yeah basically everything's just stopped so yeah guys it's doing some interesting stuff <laughs> okay just before I go I've just had a thought I just looked at DJI Avata specs up online and we can see here that there's actually three bands that this thing supports, 2.4, 5.1 and 5.8. Now, interestingly, look, if we look here at 5.8, in CE power mode, that's basically 14 dBm, and that is 25 milliwatts. Now, on 5.1, it steps up to 23 dBm, which I think is just over 100 milliwatts. No, I am mistaken. It's actually 200 milliwatts. So there's a 5.1 gig band that you're allowed to run 200 milliwatts on. I wasn't aware of that. This is definitely CE. Um, so I suppose we better test that then, because I did, wasn't actually covering that on the on the first test. So let's get the drone fired up again. This time I've got from 5 gig to 6 gig, so make sure I don't miss anything. So we'll just leave that there. So just start the recording. So now if we fire up the drone, we'll see... There you go, as expected, around 5.8. We've got a nice carrier there. Okay, let's go walkies again, see what happens. Right, just at the front door. We're still at 60 megabits. It's a bit higher now, the drone, because it's, it's up in the window, so we'll have to see, see what happens. Probably get, get further. Right, down at 23 megabits. 8 megabits, 11 megabits. See if I can lose the signal. Okay, we're down to 1 megabit now. Similar position to I was before when I lost it. Oh, it's come back up to, it's come up to 14 now. Now it's back down now, it's up to 13, 14. Okay, so I'm going to carry on going a little bit further. See what happens. Right, it's down to pretty much nothing now. 14. Bobby, he's holding up, I tell you. Right, we need to just lose this completely. Right, saying zero now. Still got pizza though. Right, it's at zero now and I've got a really blocky signal, so I'm going to head back. 
So absolutely fascinating stuff. It seems to be hopping between all three bands and we're never going to work out exactly how that works because it, it seems to be spreading, you know, putting little data packets everywhere. It's incredibly clever. Um, and I have seen from sort of teardowns of the uh, of the goggles online as well that there's a lot going on. There's a lot of different antennas in there, like I think like six antennas or something stupid like that. So it's definitely working on a kind of like um, multi-input, multi-output. Multi-input, multi-output MIMO is like a, basically a, a way of multiplying the capacity of a radio network or radio you know, capacity. Um, sort of to do with multi-path and all, all sorts of stuff like that. So yeah, guys, super interesting. And I mean, we couldn't see a noticeable difference in power level between, you know, that 5.1, 5.2 gig band between that and the 5.8. I don't think you would on the spectrum analyzer because 100 milliwatts is, is not a huge amount. But this would explain a lot as to why the DJI Avata 2 gets good range, um, even though it's, you know, not got an FCC hack yet. Maybe that's going to happen soon. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed this one. Catch you next time.